We're back taking a look at your videos. Yesterday on Tuesdays, we do a live stream where we look at channels. We look at getting people to watch your videos, click on them in the first place. The Today, the Wednesday goal is to now get your videos not clicked off of. They clicked in, how can we get them to stay there? And you notice I did say live stream. If you're watching this after the fact, after it's not a live stream, that's okay. The way this works though, is while it's live, a whole bunch of people submit their channels and then we start randomly picking them. You're going to see so many different types of videos today. So take notes, get your pen, get your paper ready and take notes on all the different tips we're going to be giving people because it's going to be a wide array. Uh, joining me today for at least the first part of this stream is going to be Travis. How's it going? Hey, oh, I'm here, ready to do things, ready to look at channels. Yes, you've not been videos. doing any videos, re video reviews with us yet. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure if I ever have with you guys before. Maybe once, but um, this might be the first time. I think it is. Um, yeah. So, are you excited to do something a little bit uh, different? Hundred percent. Yeah. Let's get into it. Let's see what people are doing. How does this work? Teach me all right. Things. So uh, well, I'm going to tell you and everyone else how this works so they can get their channels submitted. Uh, there are two forms down below. All you have to do is click on the appropriate one. If you're a gaming channel, you get a whole separate form. If you're any other type of channel, you get a different form. So click the appropriate form, fill it out. It doesn't take long, and you'll be entered to randomly get drawn throughout this two-hour live stream. You may get picked, and then we're going to pick one or two of your latest videos to kind of look at, and we're going to give you some tips on how they could improve. Uh, and we're also going to give you praises. If we feel like there's not a lot that can be done, we're going to use it as an example for everybody else. And uh, then from there, we're just going to keep doing that for like ever. So that's how it works. If you have any questions, we have moderators and everybody in chat who can help you out. But it's pretty straightforward. If you ask for any reviews in chat or anything, you will get ignored, potentially timed out, depending on how aggressive you are with those requests, uh, because those are exclusive to the forum. So just use the forums down below and we'll be on a roll. So the first channel that managed to submit, this is outside of the random draw we're going to do. This is the first channel on the non-gaming forum, and they are called Balloon Animal Master. They started a couple months ago, and their channel is all about making balloon animals, which is a first for me. I've not seen a balloon animal channel before. Uh, so Travis will take a look at their latest video. We'll watch maybe like the first 15, 30 seconds of it, and then we'll go from there. If you can't hear it, let me know. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Balloon Animal Lessons. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a very tiny balloon dog. I'm using a, you're going to need a 160 balloon for this, which is significantly smaller than your usual 260 balloon. And you're going to want to fight it to one third of the way. So you have a bunch of slashing things. This is a smaller project. So you're going to want to create a wide bubble. So it's 30 seconds. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a two minute and 30 second video. So it's not a very long video. You'll learn how to do this pretty quickly. Uh, what were your first thoughts? Um, it, now, I think the thing is, the one thing about watching any of these videos is that the viewership is different for every single type of video. There are going to be some videos that will have a slower pace and that's okay for the viewership. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of things, I think in general, you need to kind of get to the point a little bit faster. Um, I think it would be great to start off. I see there's a little picture in the top hand corner, but it looks like a drawing or something. It would have been better to have, since you're doing these, you know, by hand, to have one already set up in the top corner that's literally like, this is what it's going to look like at the end. Yeah. I understand there's a picture there, but let me see what it really looks like um, at, the, at the very beginning. Like, just put it up at the top. Like, what does it look like when you're done here? So, yeah, why isn't that just that actual thing just sitting there in the corner? We're going to make one of these. Um, I'm going to do it until you for you in less than two minutes. So, let's go ahead. And, matter of fact, that's. I would have put the video after you cut out all the fluff is going to be two minutes. So why wouldn't you say how to make the world's smallest balloon dog in two minutes? Like that's, that's something that's interesting. Um, thumbnail wise, I would just do a picture of the dog of the balloon dog with not, I don't understand the stick figure thing. Um, <laughs> you <laughs> you could make it demonstrate just, that it's small, I guess. I suppose so. I suppose so. Um, but literally you could do that. There's a lot of other ways of doing that. Um, but yeah, like this, I would have this dog on the table while you're making the new one right off the bat. So people know exactly what they're going to get the end. I, again, I understand there's just like a drawing there. But if you look at the drawing and you look at the actual thing, there are some differences. So you do want to know exactly what you're going to get. Um, I think it's just, I think it would just be better to do that. But other than that, um, again, the pacing is different. And sometimes that's okay. But if it was me, I would definitely be getting uh, to the point a lot stronger. 
my fact. I completely agree. I, I think the the thing that I kind of dinged them on if we were giving points is this screen right here where it is a blank sheet of paper and, and nothing is here yet. And like you said, this is the perfect opportunity to put the finished product up. But the fact that you're talking about a balloon animal and I don't even see like this balloon come onto the screen yet is, right. is a problem for me as the viewer because uh, you know, I'm already not getting the visual signals, the dopamine that I need for my click paying off when I click into this video. So that is a very simple tweak that wouldn't cost you any money. Uh, it's just a bit of a different workflow for how you record your videos. Uh, my other thing was uh, the audio, especially in the beginning, was really hard to hear because it was phasing between two different channels before it finally corrected itself. I'll let mm. you listen again real quick. Yeah, I couldn't tell through the through the stream. Yeah, it it it's in one of my earphones, and wow. then it kind of hits both of them. Welcome back to the Learn Animal Lessons. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a. Did you hear that? Mm -mm. I mean, it just sounds like one. No, I don't. I don't hear what you're hearing. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, for me, it's it's in my one ear, and then it's in both, and then it's phasing the entire time. It's really, really quiet, and it, mm. you can tell it's an echoey room. Uh, so the money I would like you to spend when you start to invest in your channel more is going to be on a microphone as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. It's or it's going to be the positioning of your current microphone. It's you got to do something about the audio because that's a very, very important element in any video. Uh, but especially one like this where you're doing a vocal presentation you're trying to teach people how to do something so you want to give them a nice audio experience that's going to be like a number one thing once that's mastered then i'd worry a little bit more about the camera it looks like you may be shooting this on a phone which is totally fine but uh maybe you want to tweak the settings a little bit it was a little bit fuzzy this is like next level stuff after you've kind of fe you feel good about your audio quality you feel good about the pacing of your video i think that this is fine it just could be better. And anytime we see room for improvement, we like to let you know that that's like a stretch goal for you. That's something you should probably think about. But there we go. Um, so that was our first video. It's just like that. Would you like to move on to the gaming channel? Let's do that thing. So you're not probably surprised by this, but the first gaming channel was a Minecraft channel. Uh, they have 424 subscribers. They're Drawler Apollo. And uh, they recently did a long form video on the Minecraft 120 update. And they're also doing some shorts as well. But some of them are getting some pretty good views. Uh, I want to see how they are in a long form setting. So I'm going to assume this is a video talking about all the new things coming to 1.20. Minecraft Live has officially concluded. The show went pretty much as usual, except for one thing that stood out. Mojang decided to name this update the, the Unnamed Update. This leaves us empty and without clues to what 1.20 will be. We don't know the name, but we do know some key features and mods about the update. All right, so 30 seconds in. Um, pretty strong intro here. Did you want to give your first impressions? Um, I, you're, you're more the, the <laughs> gamer guy. I'm going to let you live on this one. All right, all right. So I liked that... In, in the first few seconds, I, I noticed that you did not say, hey, I'm a Droller Apollo, welcome back to the channel, anything like that. Like, you got straight into it. I clicked on a video about the update, and I hear somebody recapping the update, which is great. Uh, I think the the edit here was kind of funny, where, where you talked about what the update's called. It I have to listen to it. Let's see, let me back up just a little bit except for one thing that stood out. Mojang decided to name this update the, the Unnamed Update. So I heard you start to say it, and then it cut, and then you, mm -hmm. you made like a separate scene of you going the Unnamed Update. Mm. Uh, so you had to kind of, something might have got messed up, and you had to redo that part. Uh, so little little tweaks like that, you know, in your editing will will be the room for improvement, I think. Uh, I noticed that you took the time to add a little bit of text on the screen with these couple question marks. So you're you're really paying attention to the experience that people are having throughout the video, uh, which is good. You've added chapters here, which is also positive. Uh, you also labeled them. So you're covering bamboo wood, then rafts, then seven new characters, camels. So this is awesome. All of these chapters could also show up in search. Uh, so there's a lot of really good practices here. Uh, I think for me, 
the biggest things for this video are going to be the quality, uh, just of the audio and the editing, but nothing that I think is too damaging. I don't think this is like, I don't think you're at a point where you're like going to suffer greatly if these things aren't corrected right away, but it's, it, it would be the first thing I would be doing again, same advice, a new microphone or better positioning for your current microphone, something you can do to make the audio quality, not sound so echoey. Uh, so that those are the big things. Um, I don't know if Travis, you have anything to add. No, I think, I think that really is, is everything. I mean, with update videos, um, there's the, the number one thing you need to explain to people. And the reason why they're watching is like, what's new, like, mm -hmm. what's different? What, what, do I care? Is, does it affect me? And those are things you kind of have to hit in videos like this, no matter if it's about games or, or, or tech or whatever, like if it's an update, the reason you're watching is you want to know what's new and is did it fix the thing you have an issue with or did it add something cool and new and those are the things you need to get to yeah they were getting to those i think at a pretty good speed mm -hmm. uh so yeah i like the intro i like the chapters and uh you know they even have a little outro here kind of curious to see if they throw to another video at the end a moment to click this next video on your screen right here that there will it is. talk to you all nice. about the minecraft it didn't come up though oh up on the top there Sniffer. Where's the end screen? They did it as a card instead of an end screen. It, it was it an end screen. It was a yeah. It was right here. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, it like <laughs> yeah, looking up the doesn't it? Yeah, that's interesting. I always look to the right. I don't know why. Okay, all right. Fair. I always put them on the right. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, mm. I I would have done the middle maybe. Just mm, yeah. Just or and you can even make these larger now. Uh, so you know, just it, it's funny because my eyes didn't go there automatically, which was kind yeah. Of, we both mine neither happened. I literally looked at the right-hand side, and then I saw the, the card come up, and I'm like, oh, and then I thought that's what they were talking about. Now, I don't know. Do you recognize this channel name? Droller Apollo 13? Not specifically. I don't either, and I'm pointing this out because this person is clearly, like, watching our content and taking notes hmm. because they are doing all the things we would generally recommend in these video reviews. They had an intro yeah. where they didn't spend too much time introducing themselves. Mm -hmm. They had value in the video. The video doesn't seem mm -hmm. like it needs to be any longer than this. They had the end screen where they throw to another video and they gave us a reason why. Yeah. You know, what's interesting. Many people, including myself, when I was first starting out on YouTube, uh, watch a lot of the live streams, but don't necessarily participate a lot in chat because they're paying attention. And you'd be amazed at how many, how many creators who have blown up or done well have been watching the same live streams as everyone else, but you're not aware of them because they're busy working. They're not busy trying to get their channel reviewed. They're trying to figure out, okay, well, what is it that these, you know, these guys, Rob, Travis, whoever, Jeff, whatever, Lexi, Dan, are telling these other channels to do, and they're just doing them. Yeah. And then they're improving. So you can come every day, every day we do a live stream and say, I want my channel, I'm but if you've not been paying attention, you've literally been wasting your time. And whenever yeah. I see someone at the end of the live stream, go, oh, I just wasted my two hours. It sounds like you did. <laughs> because if you didn't take notes and pay attention to what we've been saying all this time, you literally did waste your time. You missed the golden opportunities. I mean, it is, it is what it is. Yeah. I, I'm just pointing it out because at the beginning of the stream, I said, take notes. Your channel might not get picked. Mm. This yeah. person's he been heeding that advice. It's clear they've been taking notes. So I, that means we're taking credit for everything we've seen that's successful in this video. So, yep. Yeah, it sounds like, but the thing sure. is, is like, regardless of that, if you look at it, first of all, this channel only has 400 subscribers and within four days has 100 views on, on this video, right? That's for most 400 subscriber channels. That's very difficult to do. Get 100 views in four days. It is actually very difficult to do. Yep. But the fact of doing all these things means that this actually might get more views over time and that they didn't just come up with this stuff. They've either watched it and observed it elsewhere or they've watched us and observed it here. And that's why they're doing it because it's a thing that works. So, yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to point that out. Be sure you're taking notes. Uh, you know, you don't got to wait for us to give you permission to right. make hit videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, exactly. Right. That right after the stream. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, congrats on your channel. It looks awesome. And, uh, what I would be doing now, just as a, just cause I like Minecraft and as a tip for you, uh, I would start playing with all the new mobs and features and pushing them to their limits, making videos about you, like just doing silly things with these, uh, cause it'll be relevant cause 1.20 is going to, yes, we all want to know about the update, but what do you do now? You play, you play the game. So people are going to be playing with these new features. So now I want you to take them and really like do ridiculous stunts and things with them like have fun with it and upload those fun videos and give people inspiration to play the game for themselves all right we are going to move on to now true random selection random so selection if, you, if you've been submitting on the form get ready <laughs> Oh. 
just the claw. claw. <laughs> I don't have any sound effects for it, so it's just <laughs> it's just the claw. Uh, I guess we could do. Yeah, there you go. Fuck that. Yeah. So uh, the way this works is that we go to these two forums and we see that on the gaming non gaming forum we have over two hundred channels. We have almost two hundred channels on the gaming forum. So we'll just you know change the claw to be about like thirty. People are going to keep submitting. So we'll pull out number 57 on the non-gaming form. <laughs> what? Sorry, I'm reading chat, and some people just say the silliest things. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't see it. <laughs> I'm afraid I probably don't want to know, right? No, it's it's just it's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So <clears throat> it's Jake Z. Ready. And they're doing... Shorts. It looks like primarily basketball shots. Um, there's some actual like basketball footage. Those aren't mm -hmm. well, kind of mixed results there. Uh, but I'm kind of more curious about the ones you seem to be shooting at your own house. Hmm. So let's watch the latest one. Jake C. Reddy's friend has the ball. Shoots the layup. This guy's ankles are gone. But he missed it. And he missed it again. What? He gets the rebound, shoots it, and I guess my friend is just not a shooter. Uh, go back. How many views did this one have? I'm just curious. Versus the other one that was next to it had like 5,000. Oh, yeah. You want to watch that one? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know if the music is okay to play. Um, okay. So clear difference there. Uh, we had somebody commentating on the on the first one. Yeah, interesting. And on this one, it's just the text. Hoopers hate this. Yeah, it's interesting because again, ever uh, uh, shorts are interesting. They're just very like, they, and at times seem kind of random. Um, because I think in a longer form video, I think the obvious thing to do would be to get a, a closer up shot and maybe different angles and edit it, yeah. and, and maybe even for shorts it would be too. But this got good views, so it's hard to kind of argue um, with it. Uh, short again, shorts are just a very interesting. They're just very, very interesting. <laughs> I I was I was thinking that I would really like to see the camera zoom in right here. Yeah, that would be cool. Even a digital zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I would have really liked to see that go or not go into the hoop because once it crosses this line, the the problem and this isn't really something you can control too well, but the problem is the bricks here mm. like because mm. of all that texture, it's just hard to see. And then the garage being open is also a little bit distracting. Like these yeah. are just little things, but I might close that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um but yeah, I I think the camera might be set to your point. I think the camera's set a little far back. Mm. Um we need to see some of the court they're playing on, but do we need this much of the sky? You know, right? I, I mean, the, we really only need about up to here, almost yeah. the, just the top of the hoop and a little bit more. So I think you can afford to play around with your camera angle a little bit. And I, I liked this better than the commentary. I think people watching on the short shelf might feel the same way. I mean, this has more views, but the commentary, it, I was listening to what it was saying, but I was also distracted because I was trying to, I was trying to see like, we, it seemed like the reaction that the commentator was giving us wasn't quite right with what we were seeing on the screen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Play it again. Yeah. This guy's ankles are gone. So you said ankles. And I'm like, wait a minute. I was looking at the basketball <laughs> and you said about someone's ankles. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a basketball for, term uh, breaking someone's ankles. Yeah. So, it wasn't i didn't need to look down in that moment like that i mean you wouldn't be able to see his ankles anyway from here so uh, okay because it looked like someone might have fallen you know? yeah that's that's what he's that's what he's implying that you know he broke his ankles is is a phrase yeah i guess i just wasn't looking there so that's why i got right. confused I'm like what no I, I agree i agree yeah yeah, yeah. i agree yeah so, again it's kind of far away so it's it's hard to see exactly what's going on but by the way that's two basketball um Shorts, but is, aren't the rest of the shorts on the channel have nothing to do with basketball? Oh no, we got one here where they're shooting. Okay, there's one there. We got basketball, like okay, no, okay, okay, okay. But some of those are like they're not them playing, right? You'll never guess what Lamar. But was that like a an actual? If you watch, no, not that one. You'll learn. Not that. Not these. Like these are obviously the same. But the ones that look like they're at a basketball court. Okay, yeah. yeah. Like what are what are those? Yeah. Oh, 
Hornets right. get the rebound. Let's see what they're gonna do. Miles Bridges is taking it up the court against Reggie Jackson. And okay. his ankles are gone. He likes to say that his ankles yeah. are gone. That that you know, at this point he said it so many times, I'm thinking, why don't you just put his ankles are gone in your banner? <laughs> <laughs> His ankles are gone, but he's playing golf in the banner. <laughs> why? Why, Jake Z Ready? Why? Why are you doing golf when you have basketball? Um, I don't know. It, you know, doing shorts again is <clears throat> can be a lot of hit or miss. Um, but continuing to do kind of the the same uh, content that works is always something that's a good thing to do. I, I would I would probably um, consider like what is it you're trying to eventually accomplish here? Do you want people to watch? You play like just random games in front of your house. Are you trying to show more like college and pro games? Like, what do you? What's the point? Yeah. Uh, if it's just to kind of show different basketball things, okay, that's fine. Um, but if you're trying to actually grow the channel and stuff, uh, my question would always be, what's the point? You could get a whole bunch of people who watch your channel one time and never again, which is what I think is happening right now. Or you know, if you want to grow people, grow so that people will come back and watch your stuff, you got to give them a reason to. Right. I'm unsure if that's if that's the case. I think what could work is if it was consistently like interesting, cool, like sh basketball shots that were, that were filmed. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. I yeah. You and that. your friends are playing and you just, you have a camera running the whole time and you take moments from, from the game and it's just like some of the best moments. And sometimes it could be commentary just to kind of add some context. And sometimes it can just be some text on the screen with some music. Uh, you know, so I, I like that. And I, I like that. It seems like you're getting better and better because the views you've gotten in this last day, you know, really beat a lot of the v other stuff you've been trying. You had way more flops than you did successes. And then for two successes in a row, that's really, really good. So I think this format is working. And I think there's a lot of room for improvement just to get the video quality better, the audio quality better. And uh, it's it's all about, like, <laughs> I think what, what messed me up for the first one we watched was the, the old adage of if you confuse, you lose. And there, I was finding myself too confused watching this at the very beginning. And when I get confused, I have a tendency to swipe. And now I'm watching something completely different. So that's how the short shelf works. Your video was brought up to a bunch of people who didn't get to select it. YouTube's just trying it on them. And if they felt confused, then they didn't continue watching. Now, this was from four hours ago, and it already has 1.4K views. And it had 1.3 when we started watching. So maybe... Right now, it's doing really well. Maybe you'll even catch this one, and I'm wrong. But either way, doesn't negate the fact that there definitely is still room for this video to improve. And uh, I, you know, I think for a shorts channel, this is like a really, really good start. I so, agree. Yeah, let's move but on. Figure to... out golf, and basketball. Unless you're doing a new sport that's golf with basketball. That. Might, I mean, if you're tough. if you're just gonna play all kinds of sports and do all yeah. kinds of videos just like this one, but with different sports, that makes sense, I guess. But I'd like to see all the different sports <clears> represented in the banner. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I want to see you shooting a basketball. I want to see you hitting a golf ball. I want to see you hitting a baseball. Uh, all that stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll move on to a gaming channel. Uh, we are exactly at 2.30 on the gaming forum, so I won't have to update the claw for this. 1.34. The one at the end, please. All right. They do farming gaming. Farming gaming. Oh, what does that mean? I'm guessing they play farming games. Is that a thing? Far farming games are a thing. Or is it farming and game? I don't, I don't know. Uh, okay, a little confused. I guess we'll just watch the latest long form video, which looks like it could be farming sim. All right. Oh, wow. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Um, today we're doing a different type of video. Whoa, what kind of a game is that? I want to try this. A farming, farm sim? It's, uh, it's called Farmazin? Farm Simulator, I think. Or Farming really? Simulator. Yeah, Farming Simulator. Cool. And they have made they make one every couple of years. <clears throat> oh. Um, I think that's what this is. They didn't say it in the title. Okay, it's Farming Simulator 19. Okay, it's 2019. Um, there's a newer one. I think there's a 2022 now. I mean, the oh. graphically, it looks pretty good. So, let, yeah, let's see what this is. The best yeah. Okay, go ahead. Review on Green, Dal Green Valley Map on FS22. This is the basic game, just what you spawn with. So, and they, I'll show you what we own on the map. So this would have been good B-roll for the beginning. Yeah, so here's the thing. Okay, can I talk a little bit about when I see videos like this? Um, 
the type of content for live streams and the type of, type of content for um, video on demand, which is everything else on YouTube, mm -hmm. in my mind, and I could be wrong, although I'm not, but I could be, <laughs> is different. Yeah. So when we're doing a live stream like this, it's okay to kind of figure out what's going on in the moment. Like, oh, yeah. let me go over here. Let's try this out. In the edited video, you should edit. Mm -hmm. You should know where you're going, know what you're going to show, have it ready to go. Not like, okay, we're going to go over here. Okay, I think we're going to, don't know. No, uh -uh, I don't want to see any of that. Yeah. Because if you're trying to teach me something and I'm not sure if you know anything about it, I'm going to drop out of the video because I'm coming to you to learn something. And yeah. if it feels like you're just figuring it out, then I could do that on my own. I don't need you for that. So for me, if I'm coming to a video that's like a review, I don't want to feel like it's the first time you're seeing it. And I'm not saying that that's the case here, but it already is starting to feel like that's what's happening. Play it for like another couple seconds and let me just see what happens here. It's quiet. Cool. Yeah, like, yeah, this right, that back and forth okay. shows me that you're not real sure what you're trying to show. And at that right. point, now I'm confused and now I'm out. Yeah. I, the, I'm so glad you put it that way because that's like the point I've been trying to get across for video on demand for a long time because I see videos like this all the time uh, coming to us asking for some advice. And yeah, the way you put it was perfect. I'm I'm in complete agreement. And I think that when I said like, just, just for their understanding, when I said at the beginning that this map would have made for good B-roll, when you're here, you're talking mm -hmm. about today, we're on the blah, blah, blah on the blah, blah, blah map. Mm -hmm. And while you're saying those words, I want to see the map on the screen yep. zooming into the location, you know? So it is more editing, but it would dramatically shorten the length of your video, which in this case is probably a good thing because there's a lot of silence. In the 30 seconds we watched, there was probably about 15 seconds of silence. In fact, in the first two or three seconds. Yeah. What is that? Uh, after two seconds, I start hearing you talk. Like, Yeah, let's so, edit. If yeah. it's a live stream, okay, understood. But it's not a live stream. Right. It was not a live stream according to YouTube. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's, that's the biggest thing here for gaming, any gaming channel watching right now, any channel really, but especially in gaming, this is pretty common. A lot of people just hit record and they just start talking and playing and you can do that, but you have to edit afterwards. You have to really tighten that up and make sure that in the first zero in the zero with second, people are like hearing people talk and there's thing, things happening and going on. Also, you're talking really quiet. So I'm really confused as what you're saying. I had to listen really hard and I still didn't get the name of the place that we're actually at. And I think on your thumbnail, you have it here, but it's the smallest text I've ever seen on a thumbnail with, with not a lot going on. And it says green Valley preview, I guess. Mm. And, and it's just basically a, a garage, right? Yeah. That, that, it's yeah, very, so, yeah. There's no like context for, for what <clears throat> that is. And the text that's the closest we're going to get to knowing what this location is from the thumbnail and that's a problem too mm -hmm. you also said fs22 i'm guessing that means farming simulator 22 you've tagged your game as farming simulator 2019 so that's also not going to be super helpful for youtube recommendations um i don't know how much youtube relies on this little box but it is there and i think it is important to you know fill that out properly and i'm pretty sure can you change that how do you even do that i don't know i don't do gaming content so so you know how you can do categories and they're mm -hmm. pretty useless. It's like, Oh, it's just people in vlogs. And mm -hmm. you know, the education one was kind of broken out. Now there's more options for that gaming. When you, ch when you select gaming, you get another box that comes up and you can oh. start typing a game and oh. then, all, and then you can select from the list. It's like, Oh, did you mean Minecraft? And then it oh. even has the year released for games. I that know that. Name. Yeah. So cool. you just, you'll be really careful with this because <clears throat> what you can do with this is you can click on it and see all the people who are live playing right now. And so you can, you can see live and you can see recent videos. You can see there's a let's play category for some games. Uh, so each game has its own like house. And I don't know how many people actually use this, but if you're playing farming sim 2022, which is a newer game, you want to make sure that you've labeled it correctly, because I would say the people who are still playing 19, if there's a newer version are playing themselves, they should be mm -hmm. playing the newest version of the game. Yeah. You know, yeah when yeah. it comes to YouTube, you want to be on the latest and greatest thing. So, yeah, it's that's a very small nitpick, I would say. Um, 
we've already given this channel, I think, quite a bit of advice. I think we can move on. But those are those are our key points here. Your editing, your sound quality. Again, I think the game volume is louder than you at times. Uh, and a little more confidence behind the microphone, I think, would also help. Yeah. All right. Non-gaming forum is over 270. We're approaching 300 people on the non-gaming forum. 287. So someone who just signed up pretty recently. Yeah. Oh, just wait. <laughs> well, we'll do, okay. We'll do the latest one minus <clears> the <throat> one that just did. So 272, because we weren't that high yet. No. 71, sorry. Because someone who just now signed up just got their channel picked. Just now. Yeah. Ish. I saw one come in. I'm like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the history. The history. All right. History of what? Okay, the baby. Little Wayne. Insight. Life and Times. Little Wayne. So is it a Little Wayne channel? Uh, I don't know. No, and the baby. Why is it called just the history? I'm confused. The first piece by Elizabeth the Queen, as if young. Huh? Why did Little Wayne drop the D from his name? It's a good question. Uh, and inside in the lifetime, why is Queen Elizabeth and Little Wayne and the baby on the same channel? I don't know. I think you need to learn a lot about how YouTube works <laughs> because it's this not is not. Either. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and interrupt you. Okay. Let's hear Jonathan it. Lindale Kirk was born on December 22nd, 1991. Oh, it's a computerized <laughs> voice too. Yeah, we this is a common thing. I need to come up with a sound effect for it because to me this is like nails on a chalkboard. This feels like one of those channels that found another YouTube channel said this is how you can make money on YouTube. All you got to do is, you know, write a script and then <laughs> that's nice um find a script and then you know you know send it to fiverr or, or get the the audio language and then just put a bunch of b-roll up and just keep posting and eventually and you know listen they'll, they'll some of the stuff will get viewed because actually ironically some of the ai voices and stuff is starting to sound a little better and better and better yeah we hear it sometimes yeah i i personally don't like any of that like i will immediately click off yeah having said that that doesn't mean that you know some people just don't want it, their voice heard I don't understand the reasons behind it, but there's some people who just don't want that to be a thing and they just want to share the art and that's fine. Um, that being the case, the way YouTube works, having a video about the baby and one about Queen Elizabeth couldn't be further apart. I mean, yeah. the viewership for that is not even close to being the same. You can learn all about how YouTube works from VidIQ Max, but we're not going to promote that right now. I'm just saying that there's a lot of learnings you need to do to understand why this is not the right strategy. What's also interesting is the Queen Elizabeth one has closed captioning and the one before it does, but the other ones don't. <clears throat> ah, okay. Sorry. I was trying to just listen to the... So this is the legacy of Queen Elizabeth. To which we all belong. Okay, but they're not saying anything. The second son of King George V oh, and there we go. Mary. Okay, so here's oh, my they problem. Used the... Did they use a British AI voice? No, I, oh. I think they took this. It says ITV News, oh. and this is playing like a news broadcast. So I really, I feel like this was re-uploaded content. Yeah, now. scroll down. Yeah, because that's a different channel. That's a different channel. You're on ITV oh, News. Oh gosh, with I'm sorry. What are you doing? I, I, you know what happened is I, I tried to. Pause, oh, you press I next. Click, oh, I clicked okay. this. I'm like this channel, what? Are, like, what are they doing? That was my fault. I'm so sorry. The history yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you didn't yeah. steal anything. <laughs> queen Elizabeth II was queen of the United. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's more like it. Okay. Yeah, that's more like what we're talking. <laughs> but again, I don't. I, so the history you think would be the history of things, which it appears to be the history of people, but the people are so widely varied that. You, you're just never going to be able to get like a constant viewership because they're just completely talking about rappers and singers and then Queen Elizabeth, who's just neither one of those. So I mean, maybe she was actually, but probably not. Um, so yeah, you got to understand who your who your viewer avatar is. There's a whole lesson we do about that on um, VidIQ Max. It, there's just, I don't know. At the end of the day, um, there's a lot of learning you can do about viewership, I think. Yeah. Uh, the, the reason we've kind of gone into channel edit mode is because that's that's kind of where I think this channel needs to start, right? Like we we can go on and on about how the AI voice is a huge turnoff for many, many viewers. We've pulled it in chat a number of times and the majority of people in our live stream chats alone usually say, I do not like the AI voice. I click off videos right away. So I'm like that. Travis is like that. Rob is like that. Like everybody on our team seems to agree on that point. 
AI voices giving commentary uh, is is just an immediate like I'm out. Uh, I think if you're going to do histories, the history of rappers, then that should be your channel. I think your channel should focus on that because that's going to constantly appeal to the same type of viewer, someone who wants to know the history of different rappers. If you're going to do the history of Queen Elizabeth, that's going to appeal to the kind of person who wants to learn about the history of monarchs and historical figures, like really larger than life figures. So that's two totally different audiences. And that's kind of what Travis is getting at. We have videos on it. And then, yes, we do have even more educational tools if you're interested. But uh, that's already quite a bit of homework for this channel. So we will go back to the claw and see that we have over 200, well over, let's see, wait, where's the gaming tab? 274 on the gaming forum. It picked 274. What just happened? Was there like a glitch in the matrix just now? Like, <laughs> okay, 274. The claw picked the last person who submitted on the form. Like, it was, it freaked me out. All right, claw. I didn't know it became sentient. We've been probably using it too long. <laughs> so this is a gaming channel. So I feel like I should just ignore the shorts that you're doing. Because mm. I wait, wanna... what are the shorts? They're dancing. So the, the long form stuff is what a Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator, maybe? Yeah, or something similar. Yes, and the shorts are different irrelevant dances. So the question is, are they trying to do something different now? They're they're done trying the flight simulator stuff and they want to do this other stuff? Or are they just doing shorts? Because again, this, this ignores your viewer. Mm -hmm. What viewer who's super interested in the flight simulator stuff is going to want to watch you dance? And what viewer who's interested in you dancing is going to randomly want to watch videos about flight simulators? They're probably right. not the same people. Someone gave me a great analogy the other day. So I'm just going to just gonna say this, put this out there for everyone watching. I want you to treat your YouTube channel like a sports broadcast, your entire YouTube channel. And what I'm what I mean by that is when you tune into any sport and you hear commentators, they what they're doing, not just game to game to game, but minute to minute to minute is they are constantly explaining the rules of the game in little ways. And they're constantly explaining where the game is at in its current state, like how many points, who's doing well, who's not doing well. And the reason they design it like that is for people who are tuning in for the very first time, not just tuning into a baseball game for the first time, but tuning into the middle of a baseball game for the first time. Sports broadcasts are inherently designed to appeal to new viewers and almost exclusive to new viewers. People who know the sport well don't even listen to what the commentators have to say because they're already making their own observations. But people who need that help, the commentators are there. And they are constantly focused on new viewers. I want your YouTube channels to do the same thing. I want them to constantly be designed like a sports broadcast. You're constantly catering to new people to your channel. So they know the rules of your channel. They know what they're going to get every time they come to your channel because you are always appreciating them coming by. But if you're constantly topic jumping and think of it like changing the rules of your own sport, people are never going to be able to follow what's going on. They're going to tune right out. They're going to pick a different sport, a different channel to watch so they can focus up and they can like enjoy the content at hand so they don't have to think too hard but you're constantly jumping topic to topic and it's making people not want to watch your sport mm -hmm. so it's a it's, you know i think it's a fun analogy someone kind of framed it that way to me i'm like that's that's kind of an interesting way to think about it uh so yeah sports broadcasts always catering to new viewers i want you to do the same thing i want i want to feel welcome when i come here and i audit your channel i'm not I'm not your target audience. I'm not going to watch Microsoft Flight Simulator content, but I appreciate the people who make it. And mm -hmm. when I do come to channels like this, I want to feel like this person knows their stuff and yep. they must have a lot of really good content. If I ever do want to play this game, I want to be able to come to them. So let's check out the first like 30 seconds or so of your video. Today, we will be landing in an airport that has such a small runway that only propeller planes and turbo props are certified to land there. But hmm. we shall test that rule by landing huge, gigantic airliners <laughs> at this small airport. I love the concept. I have a yeah. bad feeling about this. <laughs> That's kind of a funny What's going on, guys? It's me, Mr. Factual Gaming here, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Okay, this part's unnecessary. I, video, I really liked the concept for this video, although yeah. 
while speaking, I don't need to see your face. What you should be showing is a couple of shots of B-roll of this big plane up almost about to land, but not landing. You don't want to show that part. You want to show how crazy it looks or do yourself even one more favor, get a whole bunch of big airplanes and crash them on purpose trying to land. And then you're like, this never works. You know, that is a hook. What you said, your concept for this video is really good. Like that's interesting to me. The execution on the intro is could be a little better. And this part right here, ignore this. Like, forget about this. Yeah. This part, like, welcome back. Ah, forget about that. Yeah. This was th this was catering to new viewers who want to learn more about this game or want to see what you're doing. You've made an intriguing thumbnail. <clears> and <throat> I don't, I was gonna say the title doesn't help me because you've you've implemented too many languages in your title. Uh, but that's a different conversation. Uh, between the thumbnail and the hook of your video, I'm I'm in. I'm ready to see this go down. And then you kind of you kind of did the thing where you're only catering now to returning viewers. What's going on, guys? It's me, Mr. Factual Gaming here, and welcome back. Welcome back. I was my first time here. I don't know who you are, and that's the point I'm trying to illustrate right now. Saying welcome back isn't inherently a bad thing. But we hear it so often, and I think that the the more modern gaming channels that are at the top of their forgive the pun game right now, they don't welcome you back to their channel. They they literally just start playing as if you've never met them before. Uh, so those are nitpicks. the The larger thing I want to focus on though is Travis. Great, great recommendation there for the B roll of planes crashing. I love that. If they want to show their face at the beginning, please don't shine a light into your camera lens. <laughs> uh, that I, I think uh, a little bit of lighting goes a long way and we can see you just fine. But the light that's either either on your ceiling or on that wall back there is making it really hard to make out any detail at all. Uh, it's, it's totally ruining your face cam shot. So I would, I would be working to improve the face cam a little bit if you're going to include it. And you can do that without, I'm not saying buy a new camera or anything like that. Just, just fixing your lighting would probably make a world of difference here. Um, Let's look at how, once you get past the whole welcome, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Let's see what happens next. Answer. The answer, oh, the answer is this airport called Wanko. Okay, here we go there's, with this. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called. You're like, this is the stuff where I'm talking about when you edit, edit. You should already know this. It's not like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> nope. You should already know it. <laughs> this isn't a question. Yeah. You you have such a solid plan going into this video. You like you know what it's going to be about. You've gotten me hyped up to watch it and you're you haven't started the video. I'm over a minute in and you still haven't gotten to the airport yet. You're still not sitting in the cockpit. Like there there's so many things that should have happened by now. Yep. And and this is a 27 minute video plus. So Thanks. I have almost 27 minutes still left. So real quick and by the way, the thumbnail is really good. Find out how far into the video you start to see the airplane land. Just skim through here. This okay. So it's not in this chapter, but the, at the start of the third chapter, in about two minutes twenty-four, we're in the cockpit. We're taking off. I see them flying, and it looks like we now have a, a runway in sight here. This is how big this airport really is. This runway is about what. 400 meters long, which is 1300 feet long, which is, which compared to other air. San Juan Center United 718 Mike Foxtrot Golf. Very Mike small. Is type Cessna Skyhawk, two miles southeast of Tango, Nevada. Oh, shut up. <laughs> um, cut, 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 cut. Like there were, there were probably four or five different bits in there I would have cut to like construct that like complete sentence but i thought a plane was going to land but it, you were kind of explaining the concept of the video again uh you were you were talking about how small the airport is but you kind of set that up in the hook already absolutely brilliant so here's the first kids. landing attempt i think and, and how far into the video are we oh yeah so now Please we're go. over five minutes in we're five minutes in the video this should be like this right here should be the thing when you're talking about, I'm going to try to land a plane, blah, blah, blah. like this, this whole thing would be interesting to see, especially when you get to the point you have like big planes. Like this is just a regular plane who's, I think he said you can land this. Where's the big plane? The one that's in the thumbnail. How far is that into the video? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, 
I, I think what you're trying to do here is illustrate the concept and, and repitch the video over and over again. Like, see how small this airport is? And look, I have a tiny plane. So now you have even more of the uh, interpretation of the scale of this airport. Like, but I believed you. You didn't yeah. need to show me any of this. Like, get in yeah, yeah, yeah. get in a 747 and try to land it on a tiny runway. <laughs> you told me you were going to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they did chapter it for us. Um, this is another small plane when do we get to the okay airbus 320 all right so now we're finally getting to probably in a more unreasonable aircraft but we're halfway into the video now like the the payoff for the hook of your video is how far in is almost halfway into the video yeah bro that's not happening sorry yeah not not to be not to be mean or anything but 12 minutes in before I get to the whole reason for me to click this and you're not someone like Casey Neistat never happening. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. So yeah. I think at the end of the day, the, the, the call out here is, you know, you had this video with a really cool topic and everything. The execution is just not there. It, you're, you're doing too much for this. So mm -hmm. you have a cool idea, execute on it, edit all that 12 minutes out from the beginning, get ready. This should be the part where you're talking about, I'm going to try to land a big plane, like this thing right now, yeah. I'm going to try to run a big plane and then shut it. <laughs> Boom. See, look, <laughs> look that's so good. Look, that's so good. Why are, is that not in the intro? What you just did right there is literally what your intro should be. You should be like, yep. I'm going to try to land a big plane and it's, and you do, you show that you look, literally show that. And look at all the edits in that moment. Like, yeah. it's like, even you recognize that this is the most intense exactly. moment. Exactly. That you have the big explosion. You got the color bars. You got all kinds of stuff. The planes flipping over. Like it's like perfect, 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 perfect intro fodder. This like, is like, this is the intro. This, yes. that is the intro. You literally edited the intro and you just didn't know it. You put it 12, 13 minutes into the video. So now that you know what to do, do it next time and watch what happens with your videos. Watch what happens. Yes. Um, definitely edit out any bits in your video that make you sound like you are trying to think of, of what you're going to say next, that you're trying to think of what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. Cause there was a lot of that early in the video. That's the kind yep. of stuff that gets us to click off. You know, we, it's not, it's nothing against you. It's just people's attention spans. Yeah. That's all we're exactly trying to help right. you optimize right now. And, I and think the, the fact I, that he edited that so well. Yeah gives me like hope because all yeah. he had to do was just get rid of the beginning part and just literally do that. Like, that's it. You got yeah. it. This person has the skills. Like yep. they have a lot of yep. skills. It's yep. just, it's in, it's, it's in a big stew and like, you got to drain out all the other stuff. You know, right. we got to get to the bottom of that. We just got to get the, the meat and all the good bits in there. Yep. So yep. 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 <clears throat> you have the skills, like you are incredible at this. And I just don't want to sound like we're, we're coming at you really hard. I think this is the deepest we've gone in a, in a review today. And I don't want you to feel like we're coming at you really hard because we we're offended by this or anything like that. Uh, we want to give you and everyone watching the tools to make better videos. And so the hook is so important. You almost nailed it. I would have just liked to see some airplane stuff, but everything between your hook and right now was not needed in the video. It should have been you. I'm going to try this thing. And then mm -hmm. 12 minutes later, it should have been that first crash, that first failed attempt with silly music behind it. Your facial expression when that thing flipped over, I noticed that too was like hilarious. Uh, I don't want to watch the whole thing, but like, let's see if we can get it maybe times two or 1.5. That's fine. So it's going to, it's going to crash and then it starts. Flip. Look at him. <laughs> like yeah. total defeat. That's you know? it. And, and that's when the face cam comes big again. That's when yep. it fills the screen with the plane small flipping. Yep. And you're just like, oh my god! That's it, man. It it would yep. feel like a completely different video if you if you did that. You'd you'd be amazed. So anyway, you have the skills, and now you have the 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 tips. Let's see the next video. Maybe in a couple months we'll come back and we'll we'll see this new, you know, kind of uh, the way of doing it. And I think you'll see what's happening. Yeah, I think you'll appreciate it. <clears throat> I'm now realizing this is the name of the airport. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, you don't okay. need that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I just the the um the world's largest airplane in Microsoft like trying to land a, a huge airplane in a small airport. That's really yeah. in Microsoft. That's it. You're Landing that's it. the largest airplane at the smallest airport. That like that's the title in Flight Simulator. You know, you don't even need Microsoft Flight Simulator. You don't have to keyword stuff your titles like this. Um, no one knows. No one has context for this airport, especially not people who just want to watch some content and they don't have this game, but they enjoy watching the content. So you don't need to break down every single proper keyword like simplify your titles to the point where no one has to think 
oh, large airplane, small airport. I already can tell it's a recipe for disaster. I'm going to click on that video. Whew. I hope I hope everybody got something from that. <laughs> and I especially hope that Mr. Factual Gaming <clears throat> got something from that. Okay. So in that time, we're at almost 350 responses on the non-gaming form. Let's update the claw to be 375. I'm tired of updating the claw. 33. Someone who submitted much earlier in the day. All right. <laughs> it does sound like a proverb. You're trying to land a big plane in a small airport. That's that's like a life lesson. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that channel's doing. You know, listen, in your life, you're trying to land this big plane on this small little airport. Your life is terrible. Like, oh, man, I knew I was doing life wrong. All right. You're, you're trying to get these big videos to land with an audience that has a small attention span. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Palette Fortress is about to hit 5,000 <clears> subscribers. So congrats. Uh, they're doing shorts. They're doing longs. Um, I don't know what to click on. The shorts seem so vastly different. This looks like they literally just took a silent film and put it on their channel. That's exactly what they did. Um, <laughs> and I guess we'll just focus on the shorts then. All right. Let's see. There's one with 3,000 views. Let's check that out. Yeah, what is this? Wow. Uh, I, don't think we can... I don't think we can play the music. It is just the music throughout. Is it on so fire? Skeleton on fire. But it's not on fire yet. I guess I, I, this was a short I, I would not it's not really on fire it's, that's a fire it's not on fire though for me I would have already clicked off this short I'm surprised it got as many views as it did because the, the, the lookout is on a fire and it's looped he just got smoke blown up his booty like <laughs> we don't blow smoke up your butt here on vidIQ's live stream except for <laughs> if it's a video of a skeleton getting smoked and blown up his butt. <laughs> uh yeah <clears throat> I don't know um I got what I needed in the first three seconds. A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I didn't know where it was going. Like the, the music's there, I guess, but it, it nothing happened in it. And what we want to avoid is people scrolling away to the next short. Right. I'm also curious the likes and dislikes on that. So my guess is, because I've, I've really been paying attention to how shorts work now. It's completely different than it worked a year ago. We talked a little mm -hmm. bit about this on a couple of Mac sessions. And we even explained <clears throat> why it works this way. And one of the things that shorts do now that they didn't used to do is they go very fast in the first 24 hours for views and then dies immediately. We talk yeah. about in Max why that is. There, there are some reasons. Um, but what that does, it's kind of interesting psychologically for a person like, well, what happened? Why did it die? When a year and a half ago, if they put that short up, it would have taken them three days to get that amount of views. So interestingly, they're still getting about the same amount of views, but YouTube is so optimized now that it's getting it's happening faster. And what you're finding is that the videos are quote failing faster. Um, again, Max explains more, more in detail, but uh, that's kind of the thirty thousand foot view. So you're getting a bunch of tries at it. You notice these are like three thousand through thirty six, like they're almost all the same. Um, yeah. Anywho. Oh, and by the way, it's Halloween one, so it might even get some views here in the coming weeks as more people start watching Halloween videos. Yeah. So it's clear they've decorated their yard, perhaps, uh, for Halloween, and they have some pretty excellent decorations. This was the right length, I think, for the short. Um, maybe a little bit shorter, just cut off a little bit of the dead space at the beginning. But yeah, unwelcome. And that's, and then we get to see the other skeleton. That's like what I would expect from a short that's going to show me their Halloween decorations. Here's one epic decoration that I have. And then you just do a short of all the different decorations for each one, like a short for each one. Um, that one makes more sense to me than the one that with the skeleton on fire, because it just doesn't like it. So much nothing happens in that amount of time uh, that it's just not great for shorts. It, it, it'd be better in a long form video where you explained what it took to set this up, where you got it, blah, 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 blah. Like that could have been interesting too. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so let's see. Let's just look at this one real quick. This is a long a lot of skeletons. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we can, I don't know where this music came from, but so in the corner, <clears throat> they're talking about these LED lights. Oh, 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 you're gonna give someone an issue. It's like a review of a, of a light, okay, without any commentary. Yeah, all right, it's just so it's just showing. Okay. 
right. So the problem with this video uh, is that, okay, until the end, we don't see the product. Yeah, like, what if I like this thing? What Can I buy it? What, what's the name of it? it? It's in the thumbnail, but it's it's not really clearly named or anything. Links down below. So you have some affiliate links for getting it. So you did all like the YouTube review stuff, like those tips you took to heart. But I I, I would have liked to see you on camera holding it. Like I'm talking about showing it. Because here's yeah. the thing. I watch a lot of YouTube on my TV. I can't see the description of YouTube videos. You don't have that option on TV. Right. So without knowing the name of it or anything, there's I could never go out and buy this if I liked it or whatever. What's it called? Does it have <laughs> Wi-Fi? Does it have a touchscreen? Is it easy to use? Is it like there's that like that would have been a a, probably a cool thing and then you use this footage as your b-roll like this uh, footage of you showing it on your garage so you can see how powerful it is that's your b-roll that's the stuff you play over your a-roll of your talking head video of you holding the light and holding the the tech and talking about it like this got 2,000 views and i think people clicked on it because of the promise of like led floodlight test and they probably expected to learn something about the floodlight I would look at your retention. I don't know how how if people made it to the end of this video, even though it's so short, because they just didn't, if they want to make their own haunted house, you didn't really give them the tools to do that. So it's always about keeping your viewer in mind. Who's who's this video for? It's for people who want to make haunted houses, like the epic ones that you've created. So what don't they know that you know now and that you could pass on to them? Um. So that, that's a few different videos from Palette Fortress, and I think we gave a, a nice smattering of tips there. So we can move on to the next one, if you like. Mm-hmm. Let's see if something yep, else we want yep. to see. Let's go. No, no, next, next, next. All right. Uh, on the gaming forum, we're up to 336 responses. 354. So once again, we're picking someone who's just submitted. Element. All right, this should be interesting. There are a lot of different ways to kind of cover game development and be successful. Oh, Ooh. oh, the Squid Game game, but then Pac-Man. someone made the Squid Game. Oh, oh they, they made. Oh, that's cool. Okay, made Squid Game Unity, Squid Game. Okay, I made Contra 3D. That's cool. This is a cool channel. It's a dev channel. <clears> this reminds me of Danny. You, you ever see Danny? Mm-mm. Um, or maybe it's D A N I. Yeah, so this person uses game, their game development skills for chaos, and they made a Squid Game style game. Looks oh, like nice. they haven't uploaded in some time, so I don't know what's going on with them lately. But uh, you know, I I did use them as an example a while back for for different game developer channels we were reviewing. Um, maybe this person uh, is doing just that. So yeah, I love the I love that I made. Now, as you know, I have I'm doing something with I tried, but I love that I made uh, a game. I made a Chrome dinosaur. You got, I like that. I think that's cool. It's a new channel. Well, a new channel in that the there's not a lot of videos, but they also haven't uploaded in a long time. So right. is it? So why are they here? You haven't uploaded in nine months, which is essentially almost all of this year. Mm-hmm. Why are you here? Are you gonna put out new videos? Is this person here? What's this video? What's their name again? Their name is Brave Dev. Brave Dev, are you in chat? If so, explain to me why you haven't uploaded in nine months, because I love the idea. Let's watch one of the videos. Yeah, I'm just looking to see. So Brave Dev, let us know if, if you can give us some background here. We'd love to know. Uh, let's watch the Squid Game one. It's got yeah, the yeah. most views. There's a Squid Game on the front page. Squid Game. Squid Game. Squid Game. Squid Game. Oh my God. Did I speed it up? Hold on. Yeah, I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wah. <laughs> we'll try that again. There's a Squid Game on the front page. Squid Game. Squid game. Squid game. Squid game. Has- Squid game. Squid game. Squid game. The Netflix series Squid Game has taken over the world since its release and became one of the most popular series streamed on the platform. That means now is the time to do something about it. With that said, I don't know anything other than creating a game, so I'm going to do it. Creating a game about Squid Game, and this is going to be multiplayer. All right, real quick, now jump into where he actually is playing. I was just curious what the game looks like. Okay, so they are making it. So there's there's kind of a story being told here. I got a random image of an open environment <clears throat> and applied for the walls. And just like that, the environment was done. So here's what I think would happen here. And this is just me, because my, my thought is, I'm only going to watch the whole thing if the end result looks cool. So I'm probably going to fast forward to the end, see what the game looks like. If it looks cool, then I'm going to go back 
and then see how he made it. Because if the end result isn't interesting, I'm not going to watch the rest of the video. This is just my viewing thing. Anyone in the chat, if that's what you would do, put one in the chat. I want to see if that's what you would do. See, I look at this and it's interesting. I Oh, and there's, okay, and there's the part where you have to do, I haven't watched Squid Games in a long time. I should rewatch it. But that's from the from the movie, yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, see, look at, look at all the ones. A lot of people would, would want to see if the game looks cool first and then they would want to watch how you made it. Yeah. And that's, that's a, that's important to understand. Um, because again, you could show closer in the beginning of the video, what your game looks like and how, then how you got there. So I, I, I agree in that, in this case, I've actually like, I've seen videos like this and I've stuck around, but the reason I stuck around is because they had really engaging hooks and, and they were telling a really good story. And I felt like, I was already getting to see gameplay because they were putting the gameplay early in the video and mm -hmm. then showing the steps to make it and like bouncing between those two things. What, what struck me about this channel was how good their editing was and how mm -hmm. slow the pace was at the same yeah, time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like they were using really good effects and, and good practices for ed their edit, but they're just, they're talking so slow and they're just kind of like, uh, you know, so we're going to set up the environment and, and then something epic happens and they, they throw some edits in there. So you you have those editing chops, but it's time to find a way to speed it up a little bit, like pick up the pace, pick up the energy, like the energy in your edits is here and you're here. And that's that's what we need to bring those on par with each other, because I was expecting after seeing this There's a squid game on the front page. Squid game. Squid game. Squid game. Squid game. Like this is like so much energy that you're getting yeah. hyped up for squid game. Squid game, squid game. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And then it just kind of like, oh, hey, so we're, you know, setting up the environment when it's mm -hmm. time to make Squid Game the game. And I, I like seeing, even though I don't use this, these tools, I like seeing these things come together. Yeah. Uh, I think it's interesting to see something start from nothing. And like, then mm -hmm. you have the tree and you have the, you've been pulling assets from everywhere. And like, it makes it feel like I could do this if I wanted to. I but agree. It, yeah. It, it has to still be engaging. That the environment was how done it. As I said earlier, this is going to be multiplayer and because I made a number of multiplayer games already, I could just use the code and modify it a bit to fit this game. And everything they're saying is interesting too. I can use the code for my other games and I can modify it to fit this game. Mm -hmm. So all that's there, but the energy is just not matching for me. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, definitely some tips there. Um, well, that, and that I see that all the time with uh, when people do other intros when they have like their branded intro. I think it's hilarious when you see it's the latest jam you ever want to see. And here is your man. It's your boy, John 3232. Hi, everybody. My name is John 3232. And today we're going to play the Minecraft. Yay. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Huh? I like this character. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> All right, next up. All right. Uh, we'll ask the claw what to do. I wish there was someone else we could ask what to do. Because I'm I'm getting lost myself. Oh, Roger, hey, what should we do? Hey, Rob? yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> How's it all going, folks? If you've just been in a Think Media podcast live stream, let us know if you jumped over. Because I did ask you all to raid this live stream. Oh. How's you it going, re Redirect. Can you just tell them to do a redirect? Yeah, did they use redirect? Oh, I don't know. I also oh get, my god! I also get about those complicated bits at the end. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm not seeing the redirect alert. Oh, oh it alerts you if you get redirected. It tells you in the chat. The, oh, kind of where the pin that. messages. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, I didn't draw that number, did I? A couple people with the yeah, cancel hashtag still going on. Marks a wavy. You are awesome. In fact, I'm going to find their channel in the background, and I think we should do a video review on them. <laughs> no, come on. What about <laughs> Zustech, who says cancel Rob? Why don't we do one of those? How about that? Hey, hey no. How about that? <laughs> all right. Go well, away. You were canceled. Look at that. <laughs> it continues. All right. Thanks anyway. for joining us, Rob. <clears throat> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Did you Did you see my little spiel sure. about uh, energetic intros and then what people, what happens? I did, yeah, I did. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Definitely, you've got to, um, whatever promises you're making in title, thumbnail, intro, you have to continue to support that cadence. There can be different levels of pace. You can ratchet mm -hmm. it up 
and then tone it down for effect because you don't want something to be going at exactly the same pace all of the time because mm -hmm. then that gets boring for the viewer as well. But if you're coming in there uh, all guns blazing, then you're going to be needing to blaze those guns for a foreseeable amount of the video. Mm -hmm. I, I wish you were here for the one we looked at a few videos ago. It was my favorite one of the day so far. We looked at a channel that was playing Microsoft Flight Simulator. And mm. yeah, oh man, everyone should go watch back to the replay. You missed it. Yeah, you can watch uh, the replay. Before we do this channel, uh, which looks like the thumbnails are incredible here, it looks like we're going to see some uh, different level of content creation. Uh, let's take like a couple seconds just to tell everyone you've mentioned a few times, Travis, about vidIQ Max because we didn't do that yet. Yeah, let's real quick do that. Uh, we won't spend a whole bunch of time here. Um, what what this is, is the opportunity to learn more about how to grow on YouTube with a group of other creators that are trying to do the same exact thing and coaches, <clears throat> three of us, myself, Jeff and Alexi. And then we have special guests tomorrow. Sean Cannell is going to join us on a VidIQ Max session. We do at least two of those a month, usually more than that. We also have our own private Discord where you can ask your questions 24 hours a day, seven days a week and get answered by either one of us from the coaching team or some very intelligent and incredibly uh, incredibly smart uh, creators that are in the community as well as some uh, subject matter experts from within the YouTube ecosphere, which most of which you actually have, you you know some of these people. I don't want to say their names, but if you went in there and you saw them on the side of the Discord, you would know who they are. Anyway, it's VidIQ Max, check it out. But again, only for people that are really willing to, to put in the time and effort we're not here just to get anyone to come in. I don't want just anyone. I only want people that are going to work. That are actually going to work hard. We have an entire section. Can you pull up uh, the Discord and put in brag about it and share that? I want people to see that people are actually in Discord and are actually growing. Um, actually, let me share my screen. Okay, yeah, go ahead. And do that. I'm like, uh, uh, getting that set up would take me a sec. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's fine. Sean Cannell rhymes with channel. Channel. Okay, Sean Channel. Sean Cannell. Sean Cannell. Um, so if you can see here, as you can see, a bunch of um, people that are, uh, hold on, let me get up here because there was a discussion going on there. So as you can see, people are putting in their metrics and the type of things that they're seeing. The, the uh, Lindholm Films went from a channel that was basically all ad spend to completely organic growth. Nice. Um, we have channels that are getting all types of views and just doing some really amazing things. Channels that did not exist when they came into Max are now have, you know, hundreds or even sometimes thousands of subscribers. We're seeing all types of really cool things here in uh, Vidaki. Look at this. This is a channel that wow. organically had basically a hundred views a month. And within a couple of months of doing the hard work, 103,000 views in the in the month. And this was after doing all the Vidaki Max stuff. So yeah, it's yeah, but totally tra awesome. Travis, Travis, that screenshot's giving me anxiety because they need to charge their phone. They charge the phone, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, it, that's the first thing I always look at when yeah. shares a uh, phone screen. Uh, can you just yeah. bring it up one more time, uh, Travis? Yeah, of I'm course, of down. course. There was, um, somebody was sharing their uh, audience retention analytics. and I just Oh, yeah, all the time. The, we all, uh, we get all that stuff. We get, that's, uh, that's probably, we have also an analytics channel where we go through all that stuff. Um, it was a little further down, a little further down. Uh, it was like the first thing that I saw. Right no, a bit further, a bit further. No, 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 a little more. That's okay. the one. Look at that. Ooh. Yeah, 75% retention yeah. using some of the techniques we teach in Max. Um, we don't we don't mess around. We work hard and we uh we crush goals on YouTube. That's what so, I want. That's what I want to improve. Yeah. I mean that's that's a that's a that's a that's a retention for your butt, right? There. No that's drop off at the end either as well. So no nope. strong. So anyway, if you're ready to do work, you're ready to put in the work. That's all. we only want people who are going to put in the work. If you're not going to put in the work, be honest with yourself. Just stay here for the live streams; they're free. You don't have to worry about it. But if you're really ready to put in the work and you have the time and effort, we're going to help you grow. Yeah, I, I got banned recently <clears throat> from VidIQ Max because I no longer want to put in the time or the effort. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. We kicked them out. Yeah. Uh, Hash, hashtag cancel, Rob. <laughs> the link down below if you're a new customer can get you a nice big juicy discount on an annual plan. So mm -hmm. do check that out. And uh, yeah, uh, if, you're, if you're ready to take your channel from hobby to business, go yeah. ahead. Oh, that take your channel from hobby to business. Yeah, I say Look that all at the time. You. I say that all the time. There. I've never heard that before. Oh, well, you can so see. Dan, it. can you just service in your voice, like so we can get the soundbite <laughs> from hobby to business? VidIQ what? Max in my yeah. voice. Yeah, yeah in your little your read book. Did I not use my voice before? No, no you use no, no, no. your normal voice. Yeah. We don't want that. Okay. Take your channel from hobby to business with VidIQ Max. I like no. it. But it's, it's a little bit. You radio commercialed me. Throw now it down a little bit. Yes. And deeper voice. 
yeah. hobby to business oh, vid iq so max ridiculous take your channel from hobby to business with vid iq max Oh, you're, 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 you're now you're mad you're about it. You let yourself now you're upset. Yeah. I'm you're you're frustrated now. now. Come Cuts on. Yeah. Well, his, it is frustrating. <laughs> it's frustrating to put on the spot. <laughs> have, have I derailed this uh, live stream? Because we haven't done any video <laughs> reviews yet. Let's push We're going to do video <laughs> review right now. <clears throat> too long. It is. I like it, but it's too long. Yeah. I don't know. For, for car stuff, this is nah, actually too pretty common. This, the, kill your darlings. This is going on too long. But wait a minute. But what what are you expecting to see otherwise? I'm expecting like, I'd say two or three different transitions and then some sort of nar narrated intro. And then they could perhaps go into a little bit more of this. But keep playing, Dan. See, see how long this goes. This is what I mean about um, pacing. It, it's, it's been the same pace for, <laughs> what, 25 seconds now at the very beginning of the video? So 26 seconds, uh, the host is introduced. I would say do that after 10 seconds. Yeah, I, and showing the old truck was a little bit confusing because you're you're promoting this as, I mean, it is a versus video, but it's about lighting and like the lights were off on the first truck. And like, I would like to see them just side by side with the lights. And then you can have some room for a couple beauty shots in that 10 seconds. And then, yeah, I, I think getting into the content after that, I, I do agree. 2022 uh, Lightning pickup. And uh, this is about as fresh as they get off the um, dealer floor. And uh, this is also my uh, SVT Lightning. So we're gonna get a little electric versus uh, gas crime here. Uh, the electric Lightning is bone stock and the gas Lightning is definitely not. Uh, I have a bunch of little I would say bolt-on level mods done to it, build engine, build trans too. So this is where there should be some B-roll now. I think um, it's spending too much on the back end of these trucks. Um, the audio is, I would say, uh, pretty good considering they're in a quite a loud environment. That felt like it was, um, what's the right word? It was localized to their voice. I could hear the background to add a bit of atmosphere, but it wasn't into interrupting the flow of the conversation. For me, I mostly had them in one channel. I have them. Oh, just in this year. oh. yeah. So uh, that that's one thing. But yeah, I agree. Like for for the environment they're in, they're pretty easily understood. Uh, room for improvement, but still still good. Uh, we're gonna see how things go. I want this truck, by the way. Like, yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah. I don't even like trucks. Yeah. It's, it's again, I think there's too much of this transition musical montage. Are they about to race? Like if I if I scroll forward. I think so. Are, trucks are fast, Dan. Huh? Trucks are fast. Especially uh, the or electric. The electric well, one, yeah. Over. Yeah, yeah. Torque but, is amazing. Does it does it say race? Battling for the title of quickest uh, Ford Well, it says quarter mile, so presumably that's meaning quarter mile oh, race. So, I saw lightning and thought it was lighting, and I thought they were going to talk about the lights on the truck. <laughs> all the also the footage at the front where they were showing all the different lights on it. I'm I'm an idiot. Okay, I think this the the quickest Ford pickup should be closer to the front of the title. This title's way too long, and I did not know we were gearing up for a race. It just you know I just clicked on it to be fair. And that reinforces even more how slow the intro is. The intro should have been the wheel. Well, you don't get wheel spin with an electric car, do you? Rev the engine. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, no. uh, <laughs> press the on button. Yeah. <laughs> press the go fast button. But it should be, the, the beginning should be maybe like showing the two cars very quickly. And mm. then the next bit is them co um, going off the starting line. Maybe that bit, but then stop. Like the, the first two or three seconds of that, to tease that that's going to be, you don't want to show this bit. Obviously, you want to leave this until the climax of the, of the video. But you need to bring in that drag race element at the, at the very beginning of the video, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I think this is a cool concept. Like, if you have access to a drag strip, you, as a YouTuber, have access to something that not a lot of people have access to. So uh, I, I think this is awesome as a concept for a video. I think, yeah, execution-wise, now that I'm finally up to speed on what the heck I'm watching, uh, yeah. which is partially my fault, uh, execution-wise, that was not what I want to see in a racing video. I want to see the track. I want to see the trucks lined up at the starting line. I want to see if if it, if relevant engines revving, uh, you know, that, that sort of thing. The, the thumbnail doesn't tease 
enough of what the comparison is right. either because you know you're comparing two trucks which is stationary but the video when you get into it is actually about them doing a drag race between each other right so very interesting concept for a video and i i think there's definitely something here but yeah that intro execution is generally what these live streams boil down to is all about getting people to watch past your intro and we're we're saying the intro here did not set us up the right way i would say the title of the thumbnail also didn't i i think the from what i clicked on to what i got was a totally different experience than what i was expecting you are right in terms of barrier to entry though dan there's probably not that many people who have access to electric trucks but a lot or, of people desire drafted. a lot of people desire electric trucks probably isn't it something stupid like uh ford f-150 is sold every 30 seconds in the u.s it's probably going to be a uh, Ford F-150 Lightning is sold every 30 seconds in the U.S. in 10 years' time. So it's definitely going to be an emerging market, and they're in the right place for that. Yeah. Getting this early like you did is amazing for your channel. I would be making a lot more content about it. Uh, I just And having access to a drag strip is incredible. But, yeah, we definitely got to work on that intro for sure. All right. We've given them a lot there, I think, and uh, this is pretty cool. Let's move on to the next gaming channel. I uh, I audited a gaming channel all oh. by myself, Dan. On the, How was it? I think Media's podcast. You'd be proud of me. Okay. Yeah, they had a good through line. They were uh, reviewing games and whether you should still play them in 2022. So it was like an interesting through line. It allowed them to jump from game to game and not be stuck looking at one type of game. Yeah, that's cool. That's always that's good if you can set your channel up like that. Uh, LT, LED TV MD. I won't try and pronounce your name because I will get it wrong. It looks like you fix LED TVs, if I had mm. to guess. Looks that way. Yeah. Let's watch, not the 50 minute video, but how about this one? It's a panel change. Nothing has happened yet. It doesn't look right, though. It's definitely broken. Yeah, I don't even need to... I, I'm already going to assume that the panel's broken, so I don't need to see that. <laughs> yeah, the video's about fixing it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah the you channel, don't need to prove to me that it's broken. The channel definitely needs somebody to come on and say, like, today we're fixing this messed up, you know, TV panel. Yep. And it, it just... It kind of feels like they, they, they do this quietly at work and they just turn on a camera. Yeah. And maybe they can't commentate at work. Maybe it's not the right thing to do in your place of business, but they could have commentated after the fact and then put that VO underneath, you know. So someone brought in this panel, and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix it up, et cetera, et cetera. I don't feel as if the creator has respected the viewer's time. What I mean by that is I wasn't welcomed into the video. And then when I look at the thumbnail, hilariously, I see that uh, one of their notifications is appearing on their thumbnail, which looks as if it was a screenshot. And it says, well, Facebook Live right. sent to friend request. Can you see yeah. that on the thumbnail? Oh, <laughs> okay, right here. So, yeah, yeah it, it literally does feel as if somebody's pressed record, press stop, press upload, press publish. Yeah. And not giving any thought to the viewer experience, the target audience, and so on <clears> and so forth. I'm being very judgmental here, but that's based on the oh. first 27 seconds of a video where nothing's happened. This is a good question, too. I didn't realize. Oh, yeah. That's I'm, a good, that's a jolly good point. <laughs> I'm on autopilot, I guess, right now. They submitted on the wrong form. Okay, we'll pick a gaming channel this they time. They are not a gaming channel. Yeah. Okay, we'll try that again. Sorry, everybody. I'm my, you know, you could tell we're getting late into the day now. Uh, 381. Everything we said was relevant, though, I, I believe. Okay, a Minecraft channel. That That is a game. You play games on TVs. We weren't that far off. You need them to work, right? All right, so a few videos here. Um, they're all pretty short. I haven't posted sense. anything in six months. Yeah, we'd like to see more posts. Also, only a small percentage of people that watch my videos are... Also? 
Nothing happened. It just it started in the middle of a sentence. Are actually subscribed. If you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. It's pause. 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 Maybe this is footage from someone else. So me as a viewer, right now I'm saying, why? What have you done for me in this video? Right. If you want to ask somebody to subscribe and use that um, graphic, by all means do that. But do it after you've provided significant value. And I've got a video coming out on that very topic, I think, in a couple of weeks. I've, I've made it. I just don't know when it's been released. I'm going to throw I'm gonna throw a monkey wrench in this and not say right. that one is, one is right or wrong than the other. I'm just going to throw out some facts. Now, just because something is true doesn't mean that it's necessarily the thing you should do. But a while back, YouTube gave access, and, I, and Rob knows this, I had access to being able to see when someone subscribed during the timeline uh, on a YouTube video. Uh, they tested it. I, I can't remember exactly why they didn't release it. it. I thought it was intensely useful. Yeah. Um, and I can tell you for sure, with 100% certainty, if you ask someone to subscribe, even early on, that your subscribes went up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Having said that, does that is are those necessarily the people you want to subscribe? Exactly. I think that ends up being the real question. The yeah. question isn't does it work when you ask to subscribe? It absolutely does work. Yeah. But are the people who are so easy to make them subscribe because you just ask them necessarily the people you want? Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I think that's a tougher question to answer. Right. We I know this is stolen from Dream, by the way. We're just it's still a jarring way to start a video. We'll we'll get to that. But yes. Um I do agree. Let's check it out. Let's let's see if the the person who made this video like comes up after showing us this like previously on kind of footage. Your mind. Enjoy the video. Just fight me. Okay. So I'm not getting the sense that the video ever is is taken over by the person who actually owns this channel. It and it looks like it, they just kind of took Dreams content and put it on their channel. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Which is a shame, because um, we can't really help you with that. Uh, you should make your own videos. Yes. All right. I feel like gaming channels are getting a tough run right now. I'm going to pick another <laughs> one. Because <laughs> first it was a TV channel, then it was someone stealing other people's content channel. Uh, but at least you got some advice on asking for subscribers, right? Uh, okay, Claw. 80. Here we go. Someone who actually submitted on the form, because the Claw keeps picking above our number count here. Rimworld. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Someone with with taste. You played on this game a lot, right, Dan? I used to love Rimworld. I haven't yeah. played it in forever, but it's such a fun game. And they've had like huge updates since. Like I, I just stopped playing, but they keep updating it. Uh, okay. You you do have like a latest video here seven hours ago. Let's check it out. Winston. Winston Wave. What an enigmatic person. He believes through combat a person finds themselves. Never ending waves of enemies will try to destroy you until you are no more. And the only way to stop them? Give up and never try again? But how? How do you find yourself if you always lose? Aren't victories the way we measure that we made progress? At first, I didn't see what Winston was trying to teach me. I had three encounters the old veteran, from each I learned a little. Let me tell you about them. All right, some background real quick for everybody. In RimWorld, you get to play these different game modes, and they they tend to have like a person like Winston, and like Winston will have a certain rule set. So you select these uh, from these different options. Like this person chose Winston, and they're telling a story basically in their intro. Uh, so the intro for anyone who doesn't understand RimWorld a little bit strange for me. I'm like, oh okay, I get it. Like Winston has a particular set of challenges for you, and you're going to show people how to kind of master the game, surviving Winston waves in this particular environment. So knowing that, uh, Rob, what did you think of the intro? Uh, it, it still didn't help me with the context. I'm still completely lost. <laughs> okay, um, that's fair. I, I don't know about any of you, but were you finding it a bit difficult to follow the voice narration? Yes, uh, a little the, bit, yeah. The, the, the accent was a, a little thick. And I guess in that case, because there are many creators with accents who are very successful, I think what the creator probably needs to do is just maybe slow down a little bit. Um, so they may be thinking a little bit more about their enunciation just so that I can follow because I was struggling to follow the words. Or you have burned in captions, maybe. Uh, that, that's just an unfortunate truth of my my capacity to hear what was going on in the video. 
Mm -hmm. Agreed. We'll watch a little bit more. Chapter 1. Complete Embarrassment This is proof that no great inventor, athlete or warrior starts good at what he does. The first encounter was a wash. I underestimated the biggest enemy out there. Nature. The greatest armies in the history of mankind were defeated by the cold, and I was no different. So I licked my wounds and tried again. Chapter 2. Overconfidence as slow and insidious killer. With my what do we think about like the way they're kind of telling the story? I just don't understand the game at all, so I'm finding it <laughs> I don't really either. difficult to follow. That's it, fair. It, like, like maybe if you understood the game, this is yeah. actually the right way to do it. And I and whenever I see something like this and I'm just not familiar with the the niche, I, I don't tend to give a whole bunch of feedback about the storytelling and stuff because I, it's usually viewer dependent. You have to be very specific about that. Having said that, there was like a structure to it. It's like yeah. this and then this. And, and I like that Perfectly part. Of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think as someone who's played the game, I think for me, it's I appreciate the effort. It just still feels like it's starting a bit slow. Um, because I haven't played the game in so long, I don't know Winston's like particular rule set, and I don't know if it was clearly explained at the beginning. So the fact that you were having like struggles just barely into the game, kind of funny. I like that you were zooming on different elements of the screen, showing that, oh, they were struck with hypothermia, then they went into a daze, you pretty much lose at that point. Uh, so I get all that, and I'm I'm fine with that, but I guess it just, the stakes don't seem very high for me right now. And yeah. so I'm just kind of like, like, something's missing here, you know, there, there's just... There's this element of storytelling that's working, and then there's something also missing at the same time. Um, I also don't know. It's about surviving Winston, but like I don't, I don't necessarily think I've learned anything so far. I feel like you're still demonstrating the challenges without giving me like a lot of tips. But if I'm searching for this video, I've probably already been struggling with mm -hmm. Winston, and I I want to know. Okay, like I went through this too, and now I want to know how to overcome it. Mm -hmm. So. I'm a little bit worried that the chapter structure you have is starting a little bit too far into the beginning. Like I'm going to struggle too. So you can just see just to prove to you that it is hard. Um, we'll skip to like the middle, see if the action picks up a little bit and maybe give a couple final thoughts on this one. And when I did, it was time with a few wandering merchants that conveniently died and left me all their loot. Oops, totally <laughs> didn't mean to. I told you this story would have cannibalism. You might think it's a sick thing to do, but I bet you the second things get hard, you might look at your neighbor and think about how tasty he is. I, I like the comedy. There is yeah. cannibalism in Rimworld. Uh, <laughs> I like that the traders accidentally left you all their loot. They definitely did not. That was that was at your hand. So I think I think the comedy elements are there for sure. And halfway through the video, it's good to see that those elements were uh, shining through as well. Um, so yeah, I think there was were some fair critiques. I, we haven't seen a RimWorld channel, so I got excited. That's pretty cool. We can move on. Awesome. I, I keep thinking you're saying Rimmer World, which Rim, is Rim a, World. Sorry, yeah, Rimmer like World outer, is a, Outer Rim, the Red Dwarf reference. Anyway, I, I have to run. I have oh, some yes. stuff I need to do, but you guys are doing amazing stuff. You don't need me anymore. I'm out. I'm gonna do my little thing. Thanks for your help, Travis. Y'all don't Peace need me out. Anymore. I'll see how it is. <laughs> Sean Cannell like channel tomorrow. VidIQ Max. Hope y'all have a great week. Bye. All right, we'll continue. Four fifty-five. We, the form, uh, the claw for the non-gaming channels, it's uh, substantially increased in size here. You, you've done a good number with the concurrent viewers to likes ratio, Dan. It's pretty much one to one. Good work. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks to everybody for hitting the like button. Uh, I think you just let me keep my job for the rest of the week, so I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only this week. Only this week, though. Three fifty-seven. I hope that doesn't become a self-fulfilling prophecy, he said to himself mentally. The music channel. Um, oh, oh, is that going to work? I don't know if that's going to work. Should we Should we try anyway? So, Let's see. You need to YouTube.com slash this. Oops. No. That's okay. Uh, music channels are notoriously difficult to do video <laughs> reviews on, true. so we'll go ahead. <laughs> Convenient <laughs> excuse from down there. Yeah, we'll go ahead and claw again. His job's now in jeopardy again because he's uh, ignoring parts of our community. They didn't, they didn't submit the right way. What am I supposed to... That has been noted. All right. Exploring nature. Okay. Backyard ecology. Exploring nature in your backyard. Cool. All right. I can get on board with that. Yeah. A trail camera was placed to watch over 
mobile duck pens in a field. These are the critters it recorded coming to check out the ducks. Enjoy. You used your ducks as bait to get foxes to come on the on the property? <laughs> Poor ducks. So I think for videos like this, this is probably the way to do it, right? I mean, you you have a space with critters walking through your yard all the time. This is this is what I call like cat TV. And I yeah. think, in fact, I think the biggest problem with this channel is they've not set up a live stream or a 12 hour video yet. As far as I, I mean, we, we didn't check for more than a couple seconds. Do you have any videos that are a substantial length? No. So my cat will watch TV. And what I will do is I will literally type in like, you know, <laughs> TV for cats. And it'll it's always birds. And they're always like, they have a camera positioned on like a, a table and they've dumped bird seed all over the table in the park and walked away from it. And it, it just runs. And sometimes it loops. So like they, they cleverly make it 10 hours when really it was just like an hour or two of shooting. But my cat will watch it for about... 10 20 minutes and walk away and then come, if i just leave it on she'll just keep coming back and watching it which is great uh i think you should try that if you have access to that kind of like land and things are happening in your backyard you should make a video that's like 10 hours long and and see you know what kind of watch time it gets i think you'd be surprised can we watch the second video the milkweed marvin yeah that one when most people think of this right. plant so isn't all webcams and stuff okay that's yeah i like that there's a host now and I like this intro already. When most people think of this plant, food for this caterpillar is what comes to mind. But is there more to milkweed than food for monarch butterfly caterpillars? <laughs> most people planting milkweed. <laughs> Cute. Cute milkweed. intro. Uh, I, I, I'm with you, Dan, in terms of the, the hook. But the first thing they addressed was you, the viewer. Most people, probably you included, think this when you should be thinking this, and I'm going to help you explain the reasonings behind that. So yeah, solid in solid hook there. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily love the branded intro. Uh, it, it was kind of loud. <laughs> uh, just a nitpick. We, we generally tell people to just avoid those, um, but it wasn't too long. I don't think just a bit, just a bit loud. 70 plus species in the genus Asclepius native to North America are doing so because it is the larval host plant for the monarch butterfly. But by planting milkweed, you are helping far more species than just the monarch. In fact, over 400 and... So, very educational video. Yep. Uh, which I like that too. He knows do, his stuff. Do you feel like, and, and we'd have to look at more videos, I think, do you feel like this person is speaking a bit over our heads when they don't necessarily need to? Or I, mean, mm, as I, said, I think I probably have to watch more to make that determination. I kind of feel like there's some interesting information here. I'm just looking at the pitch of the video and some of the terminology being used and wondering if you could target an audience that is less familiar with these subject matters. Mm. And, and instead of saying like when most people see this, you know, whatever they think of this and that might, well, I'm no, I don't, I, I see flower and I think flower, like, cause I don't know anything, but Maybe instead of that, your video could be pitched for people who don't who are like me by saying this is the blah 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 flower, and the reason it's important is because it's good food for these guys. You know, these are the blah yeah. blah blah caterpillars. Like if you were continually updating people on that information, they I could feel like this is also a video for me, even though I'm not like anywhere near an expert on the subject. But I feel like the level you're speaking, you're speaking to people who are just at the next rung on the ladder with this kind of education. Which isn't a bad thing. It just kind of excludes people like me who see flower and think, oh, flower. It's an interesting comment, this, isn't it? What would David Attenborough think of? And so you're thinking about how accessible is that content, is this content to a, a large audience? If you don't want it to be accessible to a large audience, you're going for a very specific niche, which is what you will commonly do on a YouTube channel, then you've got to appreciate the ceiling of your audience. And it might be a couple of thousand views per video. So I think they're what they're averaging of, uh, maybe a few hundred at this point, Dan. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we were looking at one video and saying that, but yeah, two to 300 views. 
across. So it's very the consistent. The view counts are very like so by most popular. Is there anything that's um broken the mold, so to speak? No, not really. No. Not really. But look at the accessibility of this video. Five native plants that bloom in summer and keep pollination something. All so right. should we see the, see the hook of that one then? See if yeah, it's more see, approachable. Yeah, it's midsummer. It's hot. The flowers of early spring are a thing of the past. Most are already setting seed. This could be a really tough time of year for pollinators as there's not a ton of plants that bloom in the heat of summer, but there are some native plants that do still bloom at this time of year. I'm Anthony with Backyard Ecology, and today I'm going to tell you about five easy to grow native plants that will bloom in the heat of summer. So, so far, I'm able to follow this. I'm yeah. on board. I, yeah. I, as you say, I know nothing about flowers. I'm, I'm still zoned in right now. This is where it could get a little bit dicey. Yeah. yeah. This is a lot of words. <laughs> it is. Let's, yeah. let's just see. Yeah. Rudbeckias, specifically black eyed and brown eyed Susans. The black eyed Susan, Rudbeckia sure. herta, is a common wildflower in the eastern US. Okay. Flowers are bright yellow with a dark center that is two to three inches across. Cool. Flowers. All right. I wonder if they say this and we just haven't gotten there yet, but where do they thrive? Like if I feel like people who are watching this might be thinking about flowers they could plant in their own gardens and it might be important to say, and they only grow on the East coast or, but you can plant them, you know, even on the West coast or something like that. The little bits of information in there, but yes, overall, I feel like the approachability level of this video is I 10 agree. out of 10. Yeah. You know, anyone can watch this video and follow it versus the one we looked at before where it felt like I really needed to know some stuff and some things. Let's take a look at migratory butterflies that are not monarchs. When it comes to butterfly migrations, the monarch is by far the best known and gets the most press. While the monarch migration is an awesome spectacle, they are not the only species of butterfly that migrates. In fact, in the Eastern United States, there are 14 species that migrate. Some of them have large migrations that follow definite routes each spring and fall. Others act more as seasonal northward colonizers. They are all cool, and I'm going to briefly discuss each one of them. Yeah, good okay. presentation. Well structured. Mm -hmm. Well thought out. Yeah. Uh, I think the only thing that trips me up here is migratory butterflies that are not monarchs. You, you're assuming that I didn't... You're assuming that I already know monarchs are known for migrating and others are not, or you're, you know, there's a couple of assumptions that could be being made with this title basically. But again, it comes to a background knowledge that I don't have. So how could you have pitched this title again to, to more of wider audience? Butterflies that hate America in summer. Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, um, I, I'm a, I'm a monarch butterfly. I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> These butterflies hate this place. You know, have a America butterfly with... saying, LA stinks in summer. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, I think there's ways to pitch this to a wider audience. And I think that's really what this channel probably needs our help with more is, is that. So that's why I think we've kind of gone that route now, but we can look yeah. at another one or we can move on. Yeah. The, the video, the video quality is of a, of a, of, of a good educational standard. Uh, you know, and, and that yeah. does uh, flow through into the thumbnails, just maybe the pitch that the, the, they know, like they know, 80% of their target audience, or like they, maybe they know 99.9% .9 of their target audience, but the problem is that target audience is about 10,000 people. And maybe they need to just move back a little bit from their target audience and say, right, it needs to be a bit more broad. Um, so I'm going to refine this target audience a little bit so that I'm pitching it to a wider audience and uh, hopefully more, more viewers come in. I, I'm actually surprised that you would assume that maybe students could use this as a very good reference point. Uh, yeah. Certainly uh, undergraduate, secondary school, science and biology classes. Nature. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're well done. Uh, yeah, the information seems credible. I, I think given the channel's name, Backyard Ecology, they, they probably do desire to, cap, to uh, capture a, a really wide audience because many people have backyards. So it, it, that... that channel name feels approachable but yeah some of these videos just they're they're, they're made for someone uh that just has like a knowledge base that's just a bit higher than what i think a lot of people have and but they want to learn this stuff there's people who want to be as knowledgeable as you are so you got to invite them in 
The, the channel is set up for success. It's just like a couple of unlocks I feel as if it needs. Yeah. So there you go. Best of luck to Backyard Ecology. Let's take a look at the gaming form, which is over 400 here. I'm going to ask this, answer this question while Dan's choosing mm -hmm. the next channel. So MVS off thinks I'm standing. Is it easier to present standing up or sat down? There's a couple of reasons why I stand up. First of all, I want to flex all of my play buttons in the background. Um, you can't see them if I'm sat down. But you are right in that I stand up during my live streams to try and bring up my energy levels um, so that I've got like a, my, my, my blood is pumping, so to speak. But it does mean that I'm always like moving around a little bit uh, to keep my feet not sore. Because if they're standing in one place for too long, then my feet get a little tired. So I do have to move around a little bit. But thanks really, for the question. It really depends on how long I guess you're going to be standing. Because sometimes mm. I stand for, for things because I have a standing desk. But uh, yeah, two hour live streams. When I try that, I usually halfway through have to sit down. Did I grab the? Yes, I did. Okay. I think this is our third or fourth Minecraft channel today. Um, all right, so there's shorts and there's longs. The shorts have some uh, varying view counts here. I kind of want to look at both. I want to see how you're tackling shorts. We give some more shorts tips and maybe we'll check out your long for video as well. That is bizarre. Look at that. How to craft and use a fire charge. Welcome to Jazz FM. Brought to you by this Minecraft video. I think this video, what it does right, I was going to say it's too fast, but that's in shorts a good thing because I have to watch it again. It mm -hmm. started, so I had to read, by the time I got done reading this, I missed the crafting recipe bit. So I missed where you actually made the thing and then you put it in the dispenser and click the button so quickly. And the only thing that could have been better about it is if the fire charge hit a ghast or something in the, flying in the, in, you know, in the nether. That would have been great. <laughs> Um, so that's all good. What do you think? I'm just nodding in agreement because I've got no idea what you're talking about. Um, the text probably needs to be in a more clear font because it's, um, what, black and orange, which matches the background a little bit. Yeah, hard to see. Uh, I, I didn't think the music was, musical choice was right. Um, or and or maybe should have they should have emphasized the sound effects uh, a little bit more. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm I'm a little lost on the context on the context uh, not being a Minecrafter myself. So fire charges are basically explosives you can craft and throw and put in dispensers and throw them that way too. So they're just teaching you how to make one of those and then uh, put it. In so is, is a key here of the the inventory management that's. Well, the, that first bit you're seeing is the crafting table. So they're, yeah. they're taking it from their inventory and putting this crafting window and getting yeah. this result. And then they're putting it in this item and launching oh, okay. it. Right. So that's that's the whole gameplay mechanic. I guess yeah. what, I'm, what I'm hung up on is, given how long fire charges have been in the game, is this information that Minecraft players today wouldn't be able to just kind of know already? I guess if you're brand new, and we talk about catering to new people all the time. But the other thing too is that Minecraft recipe content, I don't know how popular that is these days because there's a recipe book built into the game and you can see it right here. This icon will tell you how to make anything in the game. So how to use a fire charge could be an interesting video. Crafting one is like, well, you know, anyone can kind of find that out uh, in the game itself, but using one, like, Okay, how to use a fire charge could be a short. And then what if you fire charged at some at something more interesting than just kind of launching it into the air? Like, what if you blew something up that was really big? What if you hit some TNT with it and that blew up and then it revealed subscribe or something behind it? Like that that could be kind of fun. How to use a fire charge. But yeah, I kind of feel like the the target audience here is, you know, probably the, the people who are going to see this are probably already educated past that point. So it's kind of the opposite problem of the last channel. <laughs> I do find this title in structure really interesting where it's craft something in blank amount of seconds. Yeah. Like it's the same. The title formula is there with just two fill in the blanks, whatever it is you're crafting and then how long you, you need to do it. And apart from this one video that got four views, 
it's another example of how where you just repeat the title over and over again in shorts mm-hmm. it can have a significant impact on maybe recurring viewers so i'm now starting to think dan on some of our shorts we should title them how to beat the youtube algorithm in blank seconds you know however long the video is yeah it's it's interesting that some of these got less than 20 views and then some got like 5000 i think there's a level of interest in the items some of the items are just more interesting than others and i recognize some of these items as more interesting than others like a target block um the lodestone uh but obviously people aren't really interested in respawn anchor um crafting scaffoldings like eh well, so just know. scroll down scroll down cuz those don't include seconds but look whenever they include seconds with a, with a few exceptions some of them still tank and then if you scroll up all of those ones like how to craft a mine shield oh, or whatever, cool. they didn't have they did it in minecraft instead of seconds mm, interesting i mean this seems like every time i see it it's, well this one didn't take off yet yeah no, but there's a couple good. there's a couple that completely yeah. tanked but generally speaking that title structure works and it continues to be anecdotal evidence but whenever i see a creator quadrupling down on mm. a specific titling structure, especially in shorts, uh, they do really, really well. Well, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and and yes, I would continue testing that out. I think that the ceiling for your content is maybe 10,000 views, just judging by this video here. If you're going to continue crafting something in Minecraft and using it real quick. My encouragement to you would be once you're done with this series uh because it probably is a series given that there is a limited number of items in the game uh it would be to take everything you've learned and then do something just a little more interesting still appealing to new players but in a more interesting way because i think the these videos you, you probably made all of these in a couple days like these just seem very very easy to make and uh given what i know about minecraft and i think the channels I've seen that do this style of video where they just do something really quick in Minecraft in less than 10 seconds and move on. I've seen those videos reach hundreds of thousands of views. So that potential for the Minecraft community is on the table. It's just about taking it to the next level. Uh, I think the skill sets there. I mean, it's been, the proof is there in, in terms of what you're doing now. And I think you're probably learning a lot. So once you're ready, I, I think it's the next, now it's that next step of uh, doing something even more like, whoa, you know. There we go. Those would be my tips for you. Let's look at the next non-gaming channel. I'm all There's discombobulated a... because I've joined like halfway through. I don't know how lo- how far we're in. Oh, it feels yeah. like, oh, we've only just started. Oh, no, no, it's, it's, it's not that long left. I'm, I'm leaning left. back in my chair more now, so you know it's been, <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, we have... This is the biggest difference I've seen between these two forms since we started doing these. Look at this. 491 on the non-gaming and 445 on the gaming. Yay, non-gaming's winning for once. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Uh, all right, so I will update the claw to like uh, 500. Yay, trusty films, I agree. Don't cancel, Rob. Well, it doesn't work with the apostrophe. Yeah, when you put the apostrophe in. I think, they, I think that was a trick. They still actually want to see you going. That means I'm still canceled. Yeah, 413. Also, uh, thanks a lot, Absolute Mint Ada. Yeah. Dan brings uh, the expertise of the the game itself. Well, I apply general production evaluation. Yeah, if you guys keep trying to cancel Rob, it'll just be me talking about RimWorld and Minecraft all day. Allegedly. Wait, wait, what? Oh, they got picked twice. Look at that. There are people been trying to get picked for years. <laughs> person got picked that's, twice that's in one Infuriate everyone in the uh, in the chat there. F in the chat. <laughs> Two twenty-five. So did they submit their channel once? Oh. It's been picked twice, or the number just I, picked got picked twice. I might have messed up. I don't know. I, I don't. I have no idea now. Apparently, you're putting the wrong number. We'll, we'll forgive you. That person probably won't, but that's okay. <laughs> no one knows it's them that got skipped. All Hang right. On. Is this a gaming channel? So this is a gaming channel on the non-gaming form. Are you a gaming channel? Yes. Here it is anyway. No. Yeah, you see, so just go back to a form, Dan, just, just, to, just to clear up, right? Yes, this is the wrong form, go here. I wish a, there was a way when somebody clipped that, that it the form just, like, fell apart or broke or 
com combusted into fire. There but... is a workflow for that, but I've tried it and it doesn't work right. It doesn't work the mm. way I need it to, but there is supposed to be a question you can add that kind of forks it so yeah. that if you click this answer, then it gives you a different form, but it doesn't, I couldn't get it to work that way. I tried setting it up that way. Maybe we so should search on YouTube, <laughs> find a solution to this. Yeah, yeah, we should see if it, some YouTuber out there. In fact, submit that channel, please. Okay, number 30. Three zero. I'll double check that I typed it right. Living life. That's what this channel is about. All right. Approaching a thousand subscribers here. The best weekend lunch buffet in Colombo. This is thirty-three thousand views. Sweet. Seasoned professional here. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Living Life channel. I think they said welcome to the channel in English, but then they've switched languages on us. Yep. The description is in English. Everything's in English, but let me see. It's it's a cultural regional thing. It's where the English is often a a well a, a widely spoken second language, and there might be regional uh, languages in different parts of a country. So I, we we have to accept that, um, yeah. and just say that we 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 don't understand the language. But uh, what I could see is that to begin with, the, the welcome people into the channel. They're doing some B roll of the, of a buffet lunch, so I think that's all good to start with. Mm -hmm. And that was all uh, done in the first 15 seconds. The audio, the voiceover is crackling a little bit. Yeah, it was it was a little low. You're right. Yeah, it, it's a little low, but it's also like cutting. It's it's crackling. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like that. Yeah. 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 What do we think about the production quality? Uh, it, it was good up until that point because there was quite a lot of transitions, like every two or three seconds. This shot felt as if it lingered a little too long. But given that it's probably a run and gun approach, they're just using their phone, uh, not too bad so far. But as you say, Dan, the audio is, given that that's probably voice narration after the fact, they, they're able to probably treat that audio a little bit better than what they are. Mm -hmm. That would be the first thing to fix. Yeah. Uh, now it is chaptered, and there's different food that they're kind of going over as the yep. video persists. I think the the quality, given that you're doing like ten things at once, you're like holding the camera and your plate, mm -hmm. and then the tongs and grabbing yeah. bread. Like the quality here is actually top notch. You know, the the shots look really clean. Uh, the lighting is good. And I, I think that there are a lot of effort went into stuff like this. Like, this is really cool. Yeah. If it were an RPG character, their dexterity would be 99. <laughs> yeah. So all of that is really good. I think because we can't exactly understand what you're saying, it's harder to give like a full critique. But uh, I do think that the length of this video, maybe it's right. Maybe it's not. What we would tell you is that if you were trying to determine, oh, are my videos too long or why aren't they spreading as much? I would look at your retention. And if people are staying for more than halfway through the video, that's a really good sign for like a 12-minute video. Um, given how far this has spread since October 8th, I would say the retention is probably pretty good. Uh, obviously, the click-through rate is probably pretty high. It's still getting views right now, we're seeing. So that's really cool. Um, also, they started a month ago. But I'm blown away. Yeah, so it, definitely their buffet content. Is very popular because the one from a month ago, the unlimited high tea buffet one's got 28,000 views as well. So I would say find every single buffet restaurant there is in Colombo and make videos on, on, on those and perhaps maybe return to these ones when the menu changes as well. So you're able to do somewhat repeat content in those areas. And I, yeah. I was with you, Dan, uh, when I saw the timestamp, it, the, one of the timestamps said bread and butter section, presumably of a buffet, and the timestamp was over. It must have been like one or two minutes. I'm thinking that's a that's a lot for one section. It's just bread and butter. Either you have more sections of a buffet, or 
my challenge to you would maybe make the video 66% of its current length. So let's say it's 12 minutes long now. Could you aim for eight and a half minutes, nine minutes to up the retention somewhat? Tish made a good point just now in chat. Uh, so YouTube ignores small channels, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, less than a thousand subscribers. Video from 10 days ago, 33,000 views. It can happen to you. Obviously, this person understands their audience, and that is the key. If if I had to pick one thing about YouTube, that would be it. Well, well, hang on. Let's just go back to the channel bottom. I would guess what I will say is, right, I don't think you're a travel, a lifestyle style and everything channel. I think right. you're already a food buffet restaurants channel, which yeah. right now I think is fine. You can build up an audience and get those viewers to learn a bit more about you. You can tease other elements of your content within those visits to these restaurants. But right now to start building an audience, that's where my core focus would be, which I think it generally is from what I can see on the channel so far. Yeah, that's a good call out. I, I did forget they consider themselves a number of different things. Uh, but no, I think this is very specific. All right, look at another gaming channel. The gaming forum has gotten over 450 now. I'll just leave the, I'm not going to edit the claw. 4.55. Crud, I should have edited the claw. Okay. Uh, 4.55. Oh, it's in there. Nice. 4.56 was the next one. That was the last channel, the gaming channel. Mr. Sinister Z Variety. They've made it perfectly clear in their form and on their channel name that they do variety content. Uh, not necessarily a bad thing if there's a clear through line through all the content here. Rob, you you did just have an experience with this not moments ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so why don't why don't we let you take the lead? <laughs> Gee, thanks, I'm, I'm just messing with you. All right. So part two, finally. We actually have all of our stuff reset, or is it just uh, that over okay. there? So I didn't see I part one. I already hear this. So I have no idea what's going on. You reset some stuff. Well, yeah. uh, what did you reset and why did you do it? I don't know where I am. I don't know why I should care. I there's I'm lost. As a viewer that did not see part one, I'm completely, utterly lost. It's called Infinite Hallway of Insanity, Minecraft Back Rooms. You're in a pool area. It's not a hallway. So I just, this would have been great for like, you know, my friends and I just started this run where we're going through this map and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And, and last time we did this and now here we are doing it. like a recap would have been really good. If you, if you took one long recording session and broke up into parts, you got to make each video stand out to those new viewers who didn't watch the previous part and don't want to go back. Well, why don't we start there? Let's, All right. is this part one? Let's just assume it's part one. <laughs> sure. Oh, I don't like how long this is. This is a long hallway. Now ah! well, there you go. That's a good intro. That's All a right. good look. Here's the length the Austin Powers test. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm now invested. I want to yeah. know what that was, why you were going to find that thing. Chef's kiss. Yeah, that was great. That was good. That The, the next video was lacking that completely. Mm. We didn't even get a coming up. We didn't get a previous on or a coming up. So... That's that is where I think you drop the ball, and this is why part twos generally don't do as well as part ones. You took the part number out, which is great, so that's why I clicked this because I thought it was going to be for me. And taking the part number out is one piece of the puzzle. I think you should take the part number out, but then you have to respect the fact that now new people are going to come in to because now to them it's a part one, they don't they didn't know there was a second part, so you have to respect them in the process. Um, let's just watch a little bit more of that one. Definitely. Was last one you just made into a nightmare. Back rooms equals views. Views equals actually not money for my channel because well we don't have that many subscribers. <laughs> we don't have we have to turn on keep inventory so in case we die. Good Show idea. cheats. So a bunch of cheats. I'm going to here's my problem. There's too many people and I don't know who anyone is. And I don't want you to do a whole intro where you're like, that's Bob and that's Sally and that but I think as they talk you could put something on the screen that indicates who's talking, you know? So I slowly get introduced to all the characters at play here. Cause I don't know how many of you there are. You all have different mics at different qualities and you're all talking amongst yourselves. And it, here's the other thing. 
when you watch gameplay content from creators who work as a collaborative group, they do a really good job of respecting the microphone. And by that, I mean, everyone has the chemistry to like share the mic. They're not talking over each other, they're not interrupting each other. And they respect that they're in a recording session. So they're not bickering amongst each other. They understand that there are people watching right now. And I think right now it sounds like three or four friends who are just trying to figure out, we need to get this video started, but the video's already started. And so you're talking, we need to turn, uh, keep inventory on. Like that's game setting. That is background information that the audience does not need. You know, why did it make it into the final cut of this very long video? So the intro was great. The hook was great. But Rob, have you continued watching? Like hypothetically speaking, did you, did you watch that and go, yes, I'm still in? I didn't get the what or the why. Uh, I didn't know what they were doing and why. So as you say, it kind of just jumped into, it missed out the, the, we had the hook, but we didn't have the setup for what they were going to do to reach that hook uh, later on in the in the video. So, and yeah, as you say, then it just came became it just became a series of friends doing something on on a game, and we'll record it and see if anybody enjoys it. Yeah. So more editing needed for sure, and yeah, that's the other thing too. I got really hung up on the friends aspect of it, but the setup, you're right, completely missing. Don't know what's going on. Don't know why it's happening. Um, but I will say this, this is really yep. encouraging numbers it is. Yep. for your subscriber size. I'd be very excited. I would, I'm just going to channel audit mode myself real quick and just see some of the other stuff you're playing, you know, pretty consistent audience here. But when you play these Minecraft back rooms thing with your buddies, you get more views when you play these other games. I mean, there's, there's exceptions, but it seems clear that you understand how to cater to a Minecraft audience. Perhaps variety is something that could come later and you can build your channel on the back of Minecraft first. And a lot of YouTubers start there. And they, you know, when you have this kind of success, I, I say it's time to focus up a little bit. It doesn't need to be my, Minecraft backrooms content all the time. It can be other challenges and things. Backrooms is just one topic. That could be your variety. You could go from backrooms to other trending kinds of, maps and games within the minecraft space but you will continue to attract that audience and it will build and build and build and then maybe you introduce another survival game in the future you know i'm testing this out in the background i'm finding ways that channels can pivot i'm i'm trying not to be the person that tells people nope you can only play one game forever because while i believe that is a great starting point that's obviously not the ending point people gaming channels they don't want to end there and especially there's some games that end some games like this live stream, just come to an end and you can't continue making content about them forever. So you have to have a pivot strategy. But if you start variety, if you start hard and heavy, and I don't care if you're not a gaming channel, that's fine. Same advice to you as well. Going from cooking to car repairs is too much. It's too far apart. It's two totally different audiences. Respect the fact that you're trying to get the same person to come to your videos every single time. What's the through line to that content? What's that person gonna be interested in video after video so they always come back? They, you don't want that person, you want this, this is your number one fan. They shouldn't wanna skip a single episode of anything you put on your channel. Dan getting passionate there, vote for Dan, 2022. <laughs> vote where? I don't know. Is this, is this like the canceling Rob thing? Wherever possible. Wait, since you, you're gonna be canceled soon, they have to <laughs> vote me yeah, into something? Apparently so. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that campaign. I'm I don't support it personally. Uh, any final thoughts? Yes, um, Guy Gachad, <laughs> the chemist. <laughs> Clearly, you don't know who you're talking to, so let me be clear. I am the one who knocks. I am the danger. Yeah, great, and then you, you upset you've upset Rob. Thank you for that. All right, everybody, we'll see you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Catch you later.